Dr. Faustus as a character is derived from a number of sources. First was Dr. Johann Georg Faust, approximately born 1480, died 1540, a magician and alchemist, probably from Württemberg in Germany, who obtained a degree in divinity from Heidelberg University in 1509. Upon this German myth, a number of ballads, songs, poems, and stories were circulated, and by the time Christopher Marlowe picked up the thread in the later 16th century, the myth was pretty commonly known throughout Europe. However, there are suggestions that the myth actually comes from an earlier source in France. A legend was recorded in the 13th century, that's the 1200s, where a saintly figure makes a bargain with the keeper of the infirm, infernal world, but is rescued from paying his debt to society through the mercy of the Blessed Virgin. Obviously a more positive outcome than the Faust myth that we've come to know. A depiction of this particular, the French myth, is still found in the cathedral in Notre Dame in Paris. Finally, Marlowe was aware of and probably met the mathematician and astrologer and alchemist John Dee. Dee was both a tutor and an astrologer for Elizabeth I, but later he turned his attention to alchemy and believed he'd found a way to communicate with angels and spirits. John Dee had an enormous intelligence and he was famed for it in England, so it's likely that this informed a good deal of Marlowe's characterization of his learned doctor. By mixing classical mythology into the writing of the play, Marlowe contributed to developing the Faustus myth, blurring the edges between reality and fiction. First then, Dr. Faustus's intelligence. In the drama, the important first point to consider about the character is his intelligence. He is expert in many difficult fields of learning, and at the start, he's looking for a new challenge. We learn shortly he was graced with Doctor's name, excelling all. He wants something that will really test his intelligence. He's gone beyond all of the learning he can. In his opening soliloquy, Faustus gradually dismisses the fields of study he has already undertaken. Philosophy is odious and obscure, both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is the basest of the three. In this scene, Faustus is seen to be debating with himself, offering both the advantages and disadvantages of each. He addresses himself in the second person, creating an illusion of impartiality. Thou hast attained the end, a greater subject fitteth Faustus's wit. He's being scientific and he's trying to get across the idea that he's not biased. When he dismisses a field of study, he wants the audience to believe that he has reached that conclusion by scientific reasoning, not by his own personal desire. Or, um, how does he phrase it? He wishes to glut the longing of my heart's desire. He shows off his knowledge by making Latin references to his studies. Bear in mind the majority of the public watching the play wouldn't understand these quotations because so few of the population actually went to school. As a result, Marlowe has Faustus translate each of these quotes as he goes along. For example, he quotes the Bible, uh, Stipendium peccati mors est. Ha! The reward of sin is death. That's hard. Faustus also conveys his intelligence, intelligence through the constant references to the classics. This is a field which was reserved for those lucky enough to achieve and education, so they're used to reflect the character's elevated intelligence, and to the audience he may have come across as an intimidatingly intelligent man. However, despite his clear book learning, Faustus is immensely flawed as a person. He uses his intelligence in that first scene to build the impression that he is scientific, yet the quotations he uses to dismiss the different disciplines he has mastered are all either incomplete or they're misconstrued, and he does this deliberately. Of course, the reason he does this is so that the quotations he uses will fit his own personal desires. If he used the quotations correctly or in full, they wouldn't support his reasoning. For example, 
uh, he uses the Latin quote, that one we've, that I've just used, the reward of sin is death. Faustus immediately cuts the quotation short. However, if he had run it on to the next line, as it is in the Bible, he would have revealed that, quote, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Faustus does not want to reveal his knowledge that God will forgive him his sins, because this would count against his desire to cast divinity to one side. He wants to show God as hard and unjust, and the full quotation does not do this. This provides the audience with the first glimpse of the two sides of Faustus, the first wishing to become even more intelligent, even more learned, but he is led astray by the second part of his character, his own desire for personal gratification. As the play continues, the audience has shown many examples of Faustus continuing to neglect intelligence and common sense so that he can pursue his own desires. In this, he becomes less likable because he knows what he must do to avoid his fate, but he will not do it.